This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now then, let's talk about the title of this video. That solo that you've just heard me play there was played over this chord sequence, and any time I do a video with this chord sequence, I always get a little message saying, um, you've stolen the melody from Need Your Love So Bad, and therefore you owe Fleetwood Mac some money. Even though Fleetwood Mac didn't write that tune and this isn't the exact same chord sequence, I still get that message. I even got it on Wednesday when I put up a video just about the chord sequence. No melody at all, just me strumming the chords. You've stolen the melody from Need Your Love So Bad and you owe Fleetwood Mac some money. Um, you know, so there you go. I mean, as you can tell, it's, it's absurd to the point where I think it's just a bit funny, actually. I'm not complaining. There are plenty of videos I've put up where I've thought, this is probably going to get demonetized, but I'll do it anyway. And I didn't. So I think on balance, I'm still ahead of the curve a little bit. So, you know, while I'm winning, I'm not going to complain. So Mick, Mr. Fleetwood, if you're watching, here's a little bit of money towards your next Maserati, mate. Crack on. Enjoy it. I expect the thank you letters in the post. Anyway, let's have a look at what was going on in the solo. Right, so this is the chord sequence, the, the main part of the chord sequence that I'm soloing over here. And uh, it does go off onto a little bit of a tangent in a middle section that I haven't shown here. But if you're interested in more information on this chord sequence, then check out Wednesday's video where I did a sort of full breakdown of it. And I'll link to that where I went down there in the description. So go and check that out if you want to get a little bit more background info on the chord sequence. Um, so what am I doing soloing over this then? Well, basically the, the overall feel of it is A major. <laughs> An A major, an A major chord. So I'm using A major pentatonic quite a lot, and here are the different positions of that scale. There we go. And I'll put together a printer-friendly PDF 
of all of those different scale patterns for my wonderful, wonderful Patreon supporters. Um, so that's always a good place to start an A major pentatonic over something where there's an A major tonality. But this is a blues we're playing here. And anytime you want to invoke a bluesy sound, it's always good to kind of, you know, suggest um, a seventh chord, a dominant seventh chord. If I just play an A major chord now, for example, that sounds fine. But A seventh just somehow sounds bluesier. See what I mean? It's just got that bluesier sound. So what scale do we use to invoke that bluesy sound? Well, uh, or that seventh chord sort of sound. Well, the Mixolydian mode springs to mind. Uh, now, fortunately, if you've been paying attention, you already know five sevenths of the Mixolydian mode because you know the A major pentatonic. That scale contains the notes of A, B, C sharp, E, and F sharp. And if I add a D note and a G note into that, I get the A Mixolydian mode. And I tell you what, I'll put those D and G notes on that PDF as well. I'll indicate where they are in the context of the different uh, pentatonic, A major pentatonic positions, so that you can add them in at will. And it just gives a little bit more detail to the sound. I think I used this in like the opening lick, so where I, I start off with a major pentatonic lick. <laughs> adding the G note in there. That's a, um, a typical sort of Mixolydian thing. The other thing that you can do to get a bluesy sort of sound is um, use the wrong scale, essentially. Okay, we've got an A major tonality here. Anytime you want to really ramp up the bluesiness over something in A major, use A minor pentatonic. So here's an A major chord, or A seventh I'll play. A minor pentatonic. You can hear it really gives it that sort of snarly, bluesy kind of sound. So I'm using A major pentatonic, I'm using A mixolydian, and I'm also using a little bit of A minor pentatonic from time to time. And that's almost it, apart from a few places in the chord sequence where I like to just play into the chord changes a little bit. First and foremost, where we've got this D-sharp diminished chord. Um, after the D chord, it goes from a D to a D-sharp diminished. Like that. Now, here's the thing. D-sharp diminished. The notes in that chord are D, oh, sorry, D-sharp, F-sharp, A, C, and then back to D-sharp again. And the one thing that you can see there is all of those notes are three frets apart. Which means that any chord shape you learn for a diminished chord, or an arpeggio for a diminished chord, which is what we're going to be talking about here, you can move them in three fret uh, jumps along the neck, because every note in the shape, every note in the chord, or arpeggio, arpeggio rather, just becomes, moves three frets to become another note in the same chord or arpeggio. So, you know, this is a shape I like to use a lot for this. And I can move that down one, two, three frets. Same shape, again, one, two, three frets down. And it always gives me the same sort of thing, which means that you've got a little bit of mobility around the neck to sort of link positions together. That kind of thing. Um, where else am I stepping outside of the scales then? Well, we've got a lovely little chord change uh, in the second half of the, of the uh, chord sequence where it goes from an A major to an F sharp seventh. That chord contains this note, an A sharp, which would normally be an A sharp note, would be the, the wrongest note imaginable in um, the key of A. So that's why I like to exploit it over that uh, chord there, because it's just a way of adding something that would be, in other, in, in other circumstances, a bit unusual. So there's loads of um, places in the solo where I'm doing a, like a major pentatonic lick. 
that sort of thing there and then instead of coming back to that note I know that uh, I've got the F sharp 7th chord coming up so I'll land on that note and it's just such a, a lovely uh, kind of tailor made sound for that particular uh, part of the uh, chord sequence uh, elsewhere towards the end of the uh, chord sequence we've got this change where it goes from an A to a D minor That D minor contains an F note, and that's really one I do like to target. For me, it's just such a an evocative sound, so you might have... That, that change up to the F there, it's just such a beautiful sound, I think, um, you know, at that particular point in the chord sequence. And the only other note I'm really using here is we've got an E7 chord and an E augmented chord both of which contain a G-sharp note. So quite often you'll hear me doing... going into the G-sharp note like that, or maybe up here. That kind of thing. Just where you've got the G-sharp note there for the arrival of that either E7 or E augmented. So to summarise then, A major pentatonic, A mixolydian mode, a minor pentatonic and then just a few uh, choice notes uh, taken from whatever is the underlying chord um, at, at any given moment in time. This really is, I think, a great way of learning the fretboard. Rather than staring at a wall chart to try and memorise every note on every string at every fret, which never works, quite frankly, it's just much better, I think, to think, OK, yeah, I'm just going to try adding this note in over that chord. Um, you know, it, it should work. Let's find where that note is on the neck and then locate it and then land on it. And it might take you five, ten minutes to figure out where the note is, but then you can have a whole hour of or longer of, of fun jamming and including that note at the, at the appropriate time. So it's a little bit of work for a very big pat on the back that your guitar is giving you for, you know, sounding a lot better because of the inclusion of that one note. It's that kind of little bit of work for a, a big payoff that is what makes the information kind of take root in your head and you start remembering where stuff is on the neck a lot better than just some random memorization exercise. That's how it worked for me anyway, and hopefully it will for you. So there you go. Uh, go and have some fun with this. And there is, of course, a full tab in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with the video of me playing the solo and that video you've just seen there, that clip there of me explaining it and a jam track to play along with. All of that is up on my Patreon page. There's the address and the link is in the description. It's only $3 a month for all of these extra resources that go along with these YouTube lessons that I put up. Thank you to each and every one of you who is supporting me in that way or any of the other ways, all of which are linked as ever in the description box. Thank you so, so much. I am truly grateful and thank you in advance if you're thinking about doing it and that is pretty much it for today folks hope you've enjoyed the video found it useful informative enlightening and maybe a little bit inspiring and if you have please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not give me a like while you're at it uh, and that as I say is all I've got for you today folks so I'll take this opportunity to bid you all a good day and say look after yourselves stay safe stay well and above all stay sane bye for now Thank you.